Hey everyone, my name is Kwame Mbalia. I'm here with uh, my co-conspirator, uh, Prince Yoel Makonnen, and we are going to do a little bit of Q&A with you. Um, first off, we're gonna shout out the schools involved with this. Uh, so shout out to Cameron Elementary. Shout out to Star Elementary. Uh, shout out to Kander Elementary. Shout out, big, big shout out to Southern Pines Elementary. And finally, shout out to Southern Middle School. Uh, love y'all, really wish that we could be here in person calling on you, doing lightning round questions. But until then, we're just going to do it like this. Um, you well, you wanna start it off? Yeah, sure. So we're gonna go through some of your questions. Thank you so much for these great questions. Uh, it's really exciting to be able to talk to you guys, even though it's through video, like Kwame said, we hope we get to meet you guys in person soon. Um, so I'm going to pick this first question. It's from Jacob from Cameron Elementary. What inspired you to write this book? And did Black Panther inspire you at all? Well, I, for one, love this question uh, <laughs> because absolutely, uh, Jacob, uh, Black Panther is definitely a motivation for both of us. Uh, and I'll give you a fun fact too. Uh, both Kwame and I are Howard graduates and uh, Chadwick Boseman also was a Howard graduate. So we have that special connection to him through that. Um, and then of course, uh, Black Panther was such a phenomenal uh, um, movie and just the story is so cool that I know both Kwame and I had that in the back of our mind um, and definitely were inspired by uh, the Afrofuturist kind of uh, take on it. Um, and imagining Africa in a future where everything is possible, technology is everywhere. Uh, and we think that that was so cool. So it's definitely a big part of the inspiration for the book. Right, Kwame? Absolutely. Um, in fact, I think it was included in the, um, in the pitch for it. It was, a, it was like a, something meets Black Panther. I'll have to go back and, and look at the, the pitch document. Um, but uh, yeah, absolutely. And it's Black Panther was one of those films that really, um, it, it, it's, it's like inspirational and and it also uh in a way that you know uh we don't have to be derivative it's like it sets a marker right it's not a template to copy but it shows you what is possible right like hey here is this is a vision of uh africa uh of the future um what might be possible right this is one possibility what do you think right that's what i feel like black panther was it was a question that was asked to all uh creators like here is one version of a um a, a, a futuristic africa what do you think what can you do you know what what do you have and i think you know yoel and i we took that that challenge and that's kind of how we we rolled and 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 worked on last gate of the emperor with that image in mind of everything that was possible and even more so. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Rebecca asks, are you thinking of writing a new book outside of this series? If so, what is it about? Um, I don't know if you could tell in the background that I write other books. How uh, many books do you have? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. Uh, right here, you have the very first book published, which is Tristan Strong. Um, Strong. <laughs> the, my favorite, my personal favorite. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, the third and final book in that trilogy comes out in October, October 5th. Um, and, um, and then kind of here obscured by, you know, some of the glare is Black Boy Joy. And that comes out in August. Um, and that's, you know, uh, two of the books outside of this series that I've just kind of had my hand in. Um, Black Boy Joy is an anthology of middle grade short stories from contemporary to fantasy to science fiction. Um, so yeah, a little bit, a little bit of, of, of other books. Yoel, what you got? What else are you working on outside yeah, of this? Yeah, so um, I don't have as much claim to fame yet. Uh, this is my uh, uh, debut as an author, but- Says the prince. <laughs> <laughs> right, the humble prince. Uh, <laughs> But uh, yes, uh, I, I'm a, it's my debut as an author and I was so excited to collaborate with uh, Kwame on this. Uh, and I definitely have 
more in store in um, telling more stories from uh, Ethiopia, from my part of the world, Africa, um, especially because uh, the intention, even with Last Gate and, and hopefully with some others that, that I can um, you know, bring forth soon, is it's an ode to Ethiopia, to all Ethiopian kids, all kids of Africa, all kids of African descent, um, you know, and especially here in the States, there's so many Ethiopian American kids. Uh, I hope uh, I'm speaking to some of them here at the, at, the, at the school where you guys are at. So this is for you, but it's for everyone. Um, but my goal is to provide more of these stories because Ethiopia is kind of a Pandora's box. Uh, anybody who's kind of an Ethiophile, the people who love Ethiopia and are enthusiastic about their history, uh, they know that once you discover one element, you go and dig in more and different regions have great history, great folklore, um, and it's all really ripe materials for making new stories to honor the culture, honor the people of Ethiopia, which is a, a very diverse um, a multi-ethnic uh, uh, nation that has been, you know, together for years, um, and they all have these really secret pockets of stories that haven't really made it to the mainstream. So, my goal is to introduce uh, more of these stories so that people can really get into it. The people who will really love it, I, I know, will want to jump from one series to the next, uh, which probably will happen also with Last Gate of the Emperor. I, I'm I'm pretty confident about that. Uh, so you know, more of these uh, to come, um, similar stories. So stay tuned. I'll I'll I hope I'll be able to tell you guys uh, some announcements soon enough. <laughs> awesome. All right, you got the next one. All right. Okay, uh, there's some really good ones here. Uh, we can't get to all of them, but I think there's some that kind of group uh, many of the questions. Um, actually, let's talk about this, uh, Kwame, because I feel like this is such a, a, a foundational uh, question. So it's from Madison. Uh, from the fifth grade, uh, Mrs. Stephanie Bremer's class. Um, she asks, where did you get inspiration from, for the story from? Um, and um, I will just start by saying that um, obviously um, it, it's a sci-fi fantasy story. So it's, you know, it's a lot of it is the realm of imagination really. Uh, but I will say that for my part, and I know working with Kwame, um, um, uh, in the beginning, we did a, a lot of that was uh, I, I definitely tapped into kind of my own experience uh, growing up as a as a prince in exile, uh, because in my country, there was a really terrible revolution uh, that shook the country. And, um, you know, my family, some of them couldn't leave. But fortunately, my mom and dad and my brother, we were able to be outside. the. I mean, I wasn't born yet, but uh, I was born a few years after. But in any case, um, we were outside the country growing up in Europe. And um, the kind of fundamental theme that I wanted to kind of deliver from this experience is this kind of uh, separation, this kind of chasm between you and your history. Uh, and how do you move forward from them? Because my family at that point wanted to just lay low and kind of survive and, and move on. Um, but as a child, I, I was trying to make sense of this history because obviously I had family members just like in Last Gate, like Uncle Moti telling me that this history and that I should be proud of it and you know carry on the legacy. But it, it just seemed like a fable almost because my, my real life wasn't like that. I was uh, you know in boarding school and you know I didn't have a chauffeur and 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 around me I wasn't like this prince where people you know would roll the carpet or or even that I would walk into you know some type of um, succession of power or something. So anyway, the long story of it is I just want to kind of, I wanted to imbue that kind of experience in a child because even though it sounds so unique, it's actually something a lot of kids will relate to is just figuring out your story, figuring out your identity. What do I become? What career am I going to choose? Who are the people? Who are my people? Um, and I think that it's a great experience through Yara to kind of uh, see what that is because he similarly is dealing with this kind of separation from from his story and he has to kind of reconnect to it now obviously he has a bionic lioness and a super cool friend called the ibis who's this intrepid tech savvy young girl who knows how to fly sky sails 
and they go on this <laughs> adventure together. Uh, I wish I had all of that. So obviously the rest is the realm of fantasy and, and imagination, but it's at the core, the inspiration is reconnecting with your roots, um, reconnecting with your story, and then what you do with that. And I know that even for Kwame, that's very personal in the sense that we've talked a lot. I know he's very steeped in uh, African history and, and, his, and his family have been uh, very keen on making sure that that connection is there. So I know that there's also parts of you that uh, you, you, you put into that. So uh, what about you? What, what about your inspiration? I mean, it's, it's, um, it's a lot of what you said in that um, the, the inspiration, you know what, for me, the the story that I see inside of here is also the story of of the um, uh, the student, the young person, who um, as we, you know we talked we talked about this a little bit before, the student or the young person who is uh, uh, believes they must project this persona, right, mm -hmm. um, in order to survive, in order to make it through this world. Yard is someone who is has bounced around schools, um, who has been uprooted, <clears throat> never really settled down, never really found a spot um, that he could really claim as his own. So the only thing that he has, right, is his swagger and his video game prowess, right? That's that's his two. That's the two things that he can say. This is what I have, and he um, puts everything of himself into those two things, right? His swagger, um, his confidence in himself and his confidence in his, you know, ability to play the hunt for Caleb's obelisk. So um, I really wanted to invest, you know, um, this story into a character um, who learns that they are more than those two things. They are more than what they believe they are forced to project, right? more than what society sees, they are more than that. Um, and whether they are, uh, uh, whether they are, you know, like you, Yoel, a prince, whether they are, you know, just a fourth grader, fifth grader, sixth grader, seventh grader, they are more than what someone sees, you know, in a simple instant, you know, what someone passes by, someone who peeks into the classroom and sees, you know, a, a student doodling, right? Or someone who passes along and sees, you know, a student in the office. You are more than what they see. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know what you've been going through. And so I really wanted to address that person um, to let them know that's, that's, that person is really my inspiration. The, the yards out there um, yeah. that you, you know, you have your besa. It might not be a bionic <laughs> lioness, but you have that besa in your corner, right? You have that, the ibis in your corner, that person who you thought, you know, was your enemy, your opponent, and turns out they're your ride or die best friend. Um, yeah. You have your Uncle Modi's, right? Yeah. Um, the Yoni, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you, you find your family in the strangest places, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And it's, and I'm, I'm talking about that inclusive family. Um, the people that you bring in, they, you might not be related by blood, but they are there for you and they have your back. And so I really want to, that's, that's really uh, what I found inspiration in, in writing this story. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to add to that, that Yared, um, he has this confidence that I think can kind of be uh, contagious where, like you said, he's really good at video games and he's like, you know what, I'm going to go for it. I know I'm good at it. I know, you know, and, and even uh, you guys might, your parents might say, oh, too many video games and all that. Well, you know what, parents and, and, and adults, <laughs> sometimes they don't always know how good you are. And sometimes you just have to claim uh, your, 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 you know, your, your greatness through what you're really good at. So I, I love that in, in Yared. And I think that all kids will kind of uh, be able to relate to that. Tell them, tell them you're we're top 102k. All right, leaderboards. Right. You that's know right. what? This that's an that's accomplishment. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like this question um, from Caroline. How did you choose which events in the book are based off history, and some are based off the future? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question. Wow. Um, and um, I think. The, at the core of it is, is you're trying to tell a story. You have a story. Um, you have a plot. 
uh, there is a kid who whose world is turned upside down and now they have to uh, find someone close to them, right? You have a really simple story. Um, and what I find a lot of the time is that um, you you begin to add in those elements when they're when they're needed, right? So, for example, um, how do we uh, how do we get to school, right? Uh, well, you know, these you know, in the current time, we might walk, we might get a ride, we might take a school bus. Um, in the future, what if you know we can walk? Sure. We can get a ride in our hover car. Uh, maybe there is a um, anti-gravity school bus uh, with booster rockets so that you're never late. Um, and maybe there's these things called sky sails, which you know are sort of like bicycles, except they fly, right? <laughs> and so it's like you know when you're writing a story, you first you're first writing about the plot, and then you're adding in those little details that make it stick out. Um, if I if uh, we're trying to come up with a um, if we're writing a story that has a video game in it, right? And we're like, okay, it's a battle royale video game. All right, that's cool. What are we gonna call it? Um, well, you know what? In the beginning, we might just call it battle royale video game because we don't we can't think of anything. But then you know we're reading. We're like, okay, this is based off of um, in you know Ethiopian history. We're centering it on this ancient Axum Empire. You know, so we're doing some research and then we find out about this King Caleb and uh, how no one can really find, you know, the, the obelisk that is supposed to signify, you know, his, his, his burial, right? His death site. Um, so what if we make that the name of the video game? It sort of fits a battle royale style video game where we're all centering and looking for the final ring where we're going to duke it out. What if we call it the hunt for Caleb's obelisk? It's a battle royale set in the future. Um, you play it, you can fly, uh, the location changes, uh, and you wear these cool glasses because it's an augmented reality video game. So parents and teachers don't know you're playing a video game. <laughs> ah, you know, it's like, as you're writing, those things come along and you just, it, yeah. it escalates and you find that you, you're going, um, you're incorporating futuristic things like AR glasses with things from history like King Caleb and you're meshing them together. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but when it works, it is so fun and so fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the play that we had between, uh, this is a great question, uh, exactly, between based off history and based off the future, um, was so much fun. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll go back to comparing kind of with Black Panther. I think it's a good kind of reference because I think we both wanted to write like a inspirational story like a Black Panther and have this young Ethiopian boy hero from Africa that everybody's going to look up to and say he's such a, a, a great um, role model and, and, you know, I want to be like him. Um, and I think that as the, you know, we developed the story, I, I think we just had so much richness in Ethiopian's history, uh, in Ethiopia's history, where um, time and again, we wanted to anchor it in something real, because I think that's the difference I would say with Black Panther. It's a phenomenal story, but it's based in Wakanda, which is this fictional country uh, that kind of has these elements of uh, a thriving nation that has great resources and is advanced in the world, but it's it's fictional. So I, I think, especially for for you know Ethiopian kids and and um, uh, people from Africa in general, uh, kids from Africa, Black Americans from the Caribbean, South America, anywhere you are in the world, uh, we wanted this to be um, something you can anchor in reality. And Ethiopia has this rich history. Um, so it only made sense at times to put some real references. And I'm hoping that just all readers from wherever you're from, uh, you will see how cool a place uh, it is. You know, Addis Prime is like this new uh, imagined uh, future where uh, for Africa, but you can also see that it's thriving and it's cool and things are happening. So I hope that all of you will be really, it will pique your interest uh, and that you will leave having finished the book uh, and I'm saying this also to librarians and to teachers, uh, that kids will leave reading this book um, having been massively entertained on this <laughs> adventure, but also educated a little bit and learn new things about uh, uh, Ethiopia and, and Africa in general. Agreed, agreed. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's you, it's on you. Yeah.
Um, okay. Oh, okay, this is a good one. Um, so this is um, from, okay, let me, let me, uh, okay, this is such a good question. I know it's, uh, it's from Cameron Elementary, um, Mrs. Shannon Paris's fourth grade. Amelia asks, are there just robots in the book or are there other types of non-human characters like ghosts and monsters? <laughs> <laughs> thanks for that question Amelia that's a really great question uh, I think we can uh, give them a little preview of, uh, of monsters that we have in there uh, they're definitely not robots uh, in, in that case there are some robots as we talked about earlier mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe we can tell them a little bit about the Bulgu the terrifying monster that's attacking Addis Prime <sighs> um, Bulgu um, scary. such a <laughs> I don't, okay, so we're not going to give too much away. We're not going give, to give you too many spoilers, but, um, oh gosh, I wish I had, uh, I wish I had my picture of it. Um, but the, the Bulgu is like this giant um, uh, axe-headed, uh, weird, stilted-legged, uh, like almost like a, a turtle with an axe for a head. Uh, type of monster, um, but it's smart, which is like the worst type of monster that you ever want to come up against, right? Because like, oh, you know, there's a zombie. Oh, I can run a circle around it. Um, oh, there's a vampire. Ah, oh, you can't come in my house unless I invite you in. And guess what? You don't have an invite, right? Um, even Frankenstein, it's like, Frankenstein, I can, you know, I can beat you in a 40-yard dash. I'm not worried about you, Frankenstein. Uh, but like the smart monsters, right? The ones that um, are terrifying and they're powerful, um, but they also, you know, know who they're looking for. Um, uh, and they're almost obsessed with finding you. Like those are the type of monsters that give me, you know, the willies. And so it's like, yeah, the, the, the Bulgu, it's terrifying because it can smash up Addis, right? Where the Addis Prime, where the, the story takes place, um, but the Bulgu is almost personal to Yared, um, mm -hmm. and I could tell you more about it, and and Yoel could tell you could tell you more about it, but you're gonna have to read the book for yourself to find out why. We don't give spoilers around here. Nah, no spoilers. I was just think uh, gonna say that I, I feel that the Bulgu is terrifying because it's so big, and it can just crush. A lot of stuff. So anyway, go and find it. <laughs> You're gonna have to read to to discover. But yes, there, there's a lot of other cool um, non-robotic monsters in there. <laughs> um, let me see. Um, I'm also I'm also gonna do one from uh, Mrs. Shannon Paris's fourth grade uh, at uh, Cameron Elementary, um, just because. I feel like we have not talked about her enough, which is, you know, really our fault. Um, but Kelsey asks, who is your favorite character? Um, and of course, you know, we would be uh, justified and if we both were like, oh, it's Yared, you know, he's funny, you know, he, he's uh, uh, a little arrogant, he's got a swag, you know, it's, it's you know, it's Yared. But I feel like we would be doing a disservice to Besa. Um, Besa, who is uh, Yared's bionic lioness sidekick. I don't want to call Besa a pet. She's she's yeah. more in sidekick status, right? Uh, yeah. Um, because the cool thing about Besa is that Yared can understand her, right? So, you know, where everyone else just hears, you know, uh, lion lioness roars and stuff, you know, Yara and Besa can have conversations, and you'll see that I think throughout throughout the book. Um, and Besa will not hesitate to put Yara in his place, um, and will check him from time to time. Like you know, what you know, what exactly are you doing? And no one can understand what she's saying except for Yara, uh, which is I think really, really, really cool. Um, but there's more to Besa, I think, just like Yara. There's more to Besa than meets the eye. Um, 
And again, and no spoilers, you're going to have to read it to find out what exactly it is. But I think Besa is one of the coolest characters um, in the book. And I'm really, really glad she's in there, both because um, uh, she's a friend to Yared. And if you know Yared as a character, you know, friends are sparing to him. You know, they're, they come sparingly to him. So to know that he has that person who has his back all the time, uh, whether they're a person or a bionic lioness, um, I think it's really cool that Besa is there for him and that they have this relationship. So she 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 might be the coolest. She might not be the coolest person in the book, but she is the coolest character in the book, I think. What, what about you, Yoel? Yeah, no, agreed. I have to double down on Besa. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> she's amazing. And, and in addition to what you're saying that uh, he understands her, she also understands him, which is mm -hmm. really cool. Uh, they have this kind of symbiotic relationship, this this chemistry that is kind of unspoken, and and you just see them really kind of uh, filling each other out. Um, and of course, I would love to have a bionic lioness. Uh, you should uh, read and find out how much they can do and how how many cool things they can do. <laughs> I mean, imagine, wouldn't you love to show up to to school and class with your bionic lioness right there? um who can you know do so many things um and and basically can be just like a your best friend and get your back but also is super fun uh to bounce around town with um but yeah Bessa Bessa gets it for me I think you know what I would love to show up at the um at the dog park uh <laughs> with Bessa uh just to see just to see what happens you know you got your uh your angry um uh you know, Chihuahua, you've got your lovable golden retriever and a Labradoodle, maybe a Rottweiler over here. And then there's Besa, you know, um, <laughs> just, you know, doing the same thing, just hanging out, just want to try and be one of the, you know, uh, one of the, the cool cats at the park. Yeah. Um, all right. I'm going to pick uh, um, another question, uh, but this time is from Star Elementary and Candor Elementary. Uh, and I'll just have to answer this one because you guys asked, is Prince Joel McConnell a real prince? <laughs> and uh, it, it reminds me that I should always start the presentation with giving a little bit more background there. Because some people have asked me if I use the name Prince, like Prince the singer, mm -hmm. if I think it's cool uh, or, or, or other, you know, like it's some type of like cool nickname. Uh, it's not. I am a real prince. Uh, I'm, I'm a descendant of... Uh, the Emperor Haile Selassie, who was the last emperor of Ethiopia. And as I was mentioning before, um, of the Solomonic dynasty, which is a long line of, of uh, monarchs um, in Ethiopia. And so I'm very proud to carry this legacy. Um, Ethiopia is no longer a monarchy now, so I do not sit on a throne or I don't have a, a Bentley uh, driver driving me around, uh, but I do carry the, the, the history and, and the legacy in my heart. And part of what I'm trying to do and in and, 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 um, this book and, and other things is to continue this history. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, I'm also going to take a question from the, uh, from Star Elementary and Ander Elementary fifth graders. Um, just because I probably, I am not going to have a long answer for this, but I wanted to touch on it and then immediately pass it over to Yoel. Uh, the question uh, comes and it says, is Addis Prime based on a real place, right? Um, and I will answer that by saying, yes, Addis Prime is uh, uh, based on a real place. It is uh, um, based on, is it Addis Ababa? Am Addis I pronouncing Ababa. it correct? That's right. Um, That's right. In Ethiopia. And um, I have never been there. I had planned on going. I planned on going last year, but as many uh, things got canceled, you know, those plans got canceled because of uh, the pandemic. Um, so it's based on a it's based on a real place, and we try to draw inspiration again, just like with much of the book, and just like one of the earlier questions asked, you know, how do you choose um, history versus you know futuristic technology when you're writing the story to incorporate to help carry the story along. We tried to draw inspiration from Addis, uh, the real place, the real city, while also incorporating what we imagined this future space colony would be like. 
Um, so, yo, I, I wanted to keep doing yeah. this, like you're here, but <laughs> on the screen, you're here. Uh, Yoel, I will pass it off to you because I just want you to kind of cap this off with yeah. a talk about Addis and, and uh, your experience there and, and what it's like for those of us who not yet, have not yet been fortunate enough to visit it. Yeah, um, Addis Prime, yes, is based on a real place, Addis Ababa, which is the capital city of Ethiopia. And it's a bustling city with a big population, very, um, um, you know, crowded areas, marketplaces, um, Buna, not Buna man, but, you know, little Buna uh, stands where you could get coffee. Um, and so, yes, it's reflected in the, in the book, but like uh, Kwame was saying, it's obviously imagined in this kind of futuristic, almost dystopian uh, future where, uh, you know, technology is part of everyone's life. It permeates every aspect of life. And some of it is great. It can, you know, move you forward with all these great like uh, sh ships and sky sails and things that make you fly and, and get to places quicker. But on the flip side, there's also... Um, you know, use by authorities that will start using these technologies to kind of keep you down and, and make sure that uh, the population is under control. And so it, it, the inspiration for that is, is obviously completely imagined into the future. But in many places around the world, I'm sure um, we'll all agree that we can see that happening. Um, you know, the, it's, some of it is even happening kind of right now. Um, but yes, what, what's really great about Last Gate of the Emperor is um, you're, you're basically thrown into this adventure in a, in a near distant future of Ethiopia, but it's based on real places and people. So you're also going to get a glimpse into the past, which makes it a really unique uh, story to read um, through an adventure where you're actually learning about places. Um, there's elements uh, of, of history in there that go back 3,000 years. There's some that go a few centuries, some go only 50 years, you know, like a nod to the emperor, Emperor Haile Selassie, let's get of the emperor. So just know that uh, your, your, your time is well spent. Your ad adventure is going to be so amazing. Uh, and at the end, I, I think your appetite um, for e more Ethiopian history will definitely be uh, increased. And so come join me and Kwame as we go travel to Ethiopia and tour and visit all of these historic places that we reference in there. I hope you'll, you'll join us or go, go on your own. Make it a, a, field, a, a field trip with, with, with class. There you go. Yeah, Teacher. book your trip. A school field trip. I'm Who's in? Who's in? Addis, Addis, Pride. <laughs> Listen, I got my helmet. Uh, I'm ready to go. Uh, so you just say the word and we're taking off. Um, thank you, everyone, so much. We're so excited that you are excited about this book. Um, we wish we could have answered all the questions, but we get so invested in um, uh, talking about the answers for the, the questions we did get to that we just run out of time.